Hey guys, on today's video, I'm gonna go over a few tips on how you can get the most out of your calculators on the FE exam. So for this video, I went ahead and put together a list of questions, one through five, that I think will do a pretty good job of explaining some of the basic functionalities of the calculator you're gonna use for your FE exam. Um, these questions aren't very difficult, but they do a good job of just showing how the calculator works and what you can actually do with it. Questions one through five will go over matrices, vectors, simultaneous equations, polar and complex number systems, as well as some basic statistics that you can do all with this calculator. You guys are probably wondering why I have two separate calculators here. The reason I did this was to show you guys a mistake that I made on my FE. So when I went to buy my calculator for the FE, I bought the TI-36X Solar to begin with, and then I found out this calculator has almost no functionality with it. It's, it's kind of hard to use. You don't have a screen where you can go back and see what you've typed in in the past. Once you've typed it in, it's gone. So that's, it, it makes it hard to use on a, on a test like the FE where you have some pretty big calculations. And it's just missing a lot of functionalities that you would really want to have for some, some of the uh, engineering questions that you guys are going to see on the FE exam. So I did a little bit of research and I found that I was still allowed to use this TI-36X Pro. And this thing is way more powerful than this TI-36X Solar. It's honestly drastic how much better this TI-36X Pro is. So just to compare it, so you have the ability to scroll back up through where you put in in the past, which is very nice in itself. And then you have a lot more functionality with this calculator than what you did with the TI-36X Solar. Every one of these questions that I showed you guys earlier, this one through five, can be solved really quickly with this TI-36X Pro, and that is not the case with the TI-36X Solar. So be very careful when you go to buy your calculator that you're buying the Pro and not the Solar. I'll go ahead and put a link in my description for the TI-36X Pro just in case you guys want to go buy it after this video. Starting with question one, what is the determinant of this matrix? So in order to solve any matrix on the TI-36X Pro, it's just like any other calculator. You gotta plug in the matrix first into the calculator before you can do any calculations with it. So it's pretty easy. All you do is second, matrix. And just like any other calculator you've used in the past, you'll have these different matrices setups and you're gonna have to edit those in order to actually input the data that you need for your specific matrix. So you have, you'll have rows and columns listed. And this is a three by three matrix. So we'll do three and three and hit okay. And this will bring up the matrix. So now all you have to do is input as you see directly from the question. So the first row is two, five, four, second row, five, four, seven, third row, seven, three, nine. So now we have created matrix A, and it's identical to the matrix in the question. So in order to solve this now, you just go second quit, and you go to second matrix, and you go over to math, and you do determinant. And now you go back to matrix, so second matrix, and now you go back to the that matrix we just created, A, you hit enter on it, close the parenthesis, and then hit enter, and it shows that the answer to that question is negative two. So the determinant of this three by three matrix is negative two. Let's talk about how you would solve a vector question on the TI-36X Pro. Uh, reading number two, given vector A and B, find A dot B, A cross B. So on number two, we're given two different vectors. They're both three variable vectors, and they're wanting us to find the dot product and the cross product. So in order to do this, you're gonna have to input both vectors into your calculator. It's pretty easy to do. You hit second, go down to this double E, and then hit enter, which will bring you to the vector screen. And just like the matrices, you'll go over to edit, go to U, and this is a three variable vector. So you go over to the three, hit enter, and then hit enter again, and you'll plug in the coefficients of the vector, which is eight, two, and one. So now you've successfully entered in the first vector, so you hit second quit, 
and now you go back to the same screen that we were just at so second vector and you scroll over and now you want to make a second vector so you go down to the v number two and hit enter this is also a three variable vector so you go over to the right and hit enter on the three hit enter again and now you input the coefficients again which are five negative one and six so now you hit second quit again now in order to solve for the dot product you go second vector same screen but now you go over to math the math tab and you hit enter for the first one which is the dot product and you go second vector again enter so that will bring the first vector in our vector a and now you do second comma and you go back to the vector screen and you put in our second vector which will be the b which is synonymous to the number two which is v and you hit enter and then you close that parentheses and you hit enter and the dot product between a and b is equal to 44. so we'll write that down now you already have both vectors a and b inputted so in order to find the cross product it's as simple as putting it in so you go second vector again over to math and now you go to cross product number two hit enter and it'll be the same process so you go second vector hit enter for one which pertains to a vector a go second comma then go back to the vector screen go down to two hit enter close the, close the parentheses now you have vector a and vector b and you're doing the cross product of those two vectors you hit enter and you can see that the cross product is equal to 13 I minus 43J plus or minus 18X. And that is your answer. So let's talk about how you would solve a simultaneous equation using the TI-36X Pro. So number three is asking us to solve the simultaneous equation for the three variables x, y, and z in these three equations. And many of us, whenever we try to solve a simultaneous equation on a calculator, it normally means putting it into a matrix. However, the, if certain conditions are met, the TI-36X Pro can do it. It has a function just to put in the coefficients and it'll output the, um, the answer without having to take any extra steps with the matrix that you normally would have to do on a calculator. So if you go second, system solve, and you go to three by three, because we're working with the three by three uh, linear system, hit enter, and it'll bring you up a screen. It's basically the matrix like you would use on a typical graphing calculator where you put in the coefficients and then hit enter and then do like the RF and it will give you the results that way. However, this way, just a little bit simpler and a little bit quicker. So you look at the coefficients for this problem, and if we're looking at the first equation, it's one, two, negative one, five. Second row, or second uh, equation, negative one, two, two, negative four. Third equation, two, eight, five, and four. Okay, so now we've just inputted these uh, system of equations and we just hit solve. And it tells you X is 11 over four, is 11 over four. So that's it. No extra step, just plugging it in and writing down the solution. Y, 13 over 24. And Z, negative seven over six. So in many of the FE tests, you're gonna be asked to convert from polar form to complex form or vice versa. And that's definitely true in the electrical FE exam. So number four kind of deals with that. It's asking us to convert to the complex number six plus two I to polar form. So we know polar form takes the form of R parentheses, cosine theta plus I sine theta. So in order to solve this question and convert the complex number to a polar form, what you have to do is first type in the complex number, so six plus two, and then you go over here and hit this three times, this button, the pi e over i, three times, and that'll bring up your imaginary number, and now you go second complex, and you scroll down to number four, which will change your complex number 
into a polar form number. You hit enter and then you hit enter one more time. And this brings up this solution. So the R pertains with the R, theta with the theta. So the answer for this question is Z equals, I didn't give myself enough room, so let me just move this over a little bit. Therefore, Z equals R, which is 6.324, and then cosine of theta, which you just scroll over, you do 18, Point four three degrees plus I sine of theta, which is the same theta, so 18.43 degrees. And that is your answer to convert the complex number into the polar form. The last topic I want to cover on this calculator is how to do a few simple statistic analysis questions that can help save you guys a lot of time. So the statistics questions you typically see on the FE exam aren't difficult, but they do take time. And the FE is a timed exam, so if you can eliminate some time it takes to, you, to figure out these questions, you're going to really benefit from that. So let's roll right into it. The question reads, what are the mean and sample standard deviation of the following numbers? So in order to solve a statistical question like this, you have to input the numbers just like you do with the matrices and the vectors. So to do that, you go to data and you are, you're given three separate lists. So for a, t a question like this, you only need one list. You only need to list the numbers in one list. So we'll do L1. So 72.6, enter, 73, 74.2, 75.7, and 80.2. Now you've successfully entered in all the um, data points you needed into list two, list one. So you do second quit and you go to second stat button. So you hit that and you go down to one variable stats and then you do. So this is where you select what list we just put it in. So we, we use list one and the frequency. So we only want to do it with the frequency of one for a question like this. Hit calc. And just like that, you're given the solution to this question. So you scroll down to number two, the mean 75.14. And the sample standard deviation is 3.08, we'll round up. So a question that could have taken you a few minutes, six to seven minutes to try to work out by hand, you solved in a minute using the TI-36X Pro. I hope you guys found the video helpful. If you did find the video helpful, please consider liking the video and subscribing. I'll see you next time.